So hello and welcome back to the Virtual Airline Pilot channel. Today we're looking at flight planning and uh, continuing this top tips for making your flight sim experience more realistic. Um, yeah, we're looking at a way to uh, generate some flight plans for free. Now I wanted to start off in a payware uh, piece of software which is PFPX. This is what I use to generate my flight plans when I'm flying in Prepared or FSX or uh, X-Plane. And it allows you to put in details about your flight, generate a route like this, have a nice moving map, and uh, it generates a flight plan with all your routing information, flight levels, weather, and also things like your weather at certain points, such as your destination and alternates, and no terms as well. Again, this is, I've spoke about Payware before, and the reason I use Payware is because I like to have a separate software system that I can use offline uh, as well as online. But um, yeah, I just like to have it all separate, and this is a, it's quite an in-depth um, flight planning system. So this is really great if you want to go really in-depth. If, however, you're new to flight planning, but you want to generate a flight plan like they use in the real world, there is a way to do it for free using a great tool, and that tool is called Simbrief. Simbrief.com, I'll leave a link in the description below. Um, you can sign up, it, uh, it doesn't cost you anything, but you can donate and I would recommend you do that if you use this a lot because the stuff you can do with this uh, this website is, is really, really cool. So essentially it allows you to, like PFPX I suppose, but it allows you to put some details in about your flight, where you're flying from and to, and um, it will generate a flight plan based on real world navigation information and generate an actual flight plan that you can follow. It'll also put in things like weather and no tams too. So that's really cool if you wanna kind of turn up the realism on your flying. So in this video, I just wanted to take a quick tour around Simbrief, make a quick flight plan, and uh, perhaps you can go away and um, try it for yourself. There is a user guide and tutorial video for this, so do go and check those out as well. But first off, let's go to the dispatch system. And we go create new flight. Okay, so we're just gonna make up a flight today. Uh, let's say we are Ryanair 100 from Gatwick to Paphos. Now, I know those codes off by heart, the um, ICAO codes, but you might want to go and check those out because you have to use a four letter identifier for your airport. But you can search um, online for these, it's really easy. Wikipedia can tell you what the uh, the four letter identifiers are for these airports. Right, um, put in your departure time, so this is GMT time, and then select your airframe. So there's lots and lots of aircraft on here already. Let's select the 737-800. That's gonna change some details um, in the background, but we don't really need to worry about that for now. I mean, we can go to more options. We can go a lot more in depth. If um, if your airline has a, a, a cost index, you can set it here. Uh, that, you know, I'm not gonna go into this, but um, it, it is quite expansive what you can do. Moving on then, um, it's, Given a rough scheduled time of 4 hours 15 minutes, it knows that due to the current weather at Gatwick, so there we go, just hover over that, it's giving us the current METAR and TAF, which is really cool. It's going to be a 2-6 left departure, and based on the weather at Pathos, it's going to be a runway 29 arrival. Uh, it's also calculated some um, basic taxi out and taxi in times, so you need to kind of take this into consideration when you're flying because you're going to be burning fuel on the ground. Uh, altitude set to auto at the moment, so it's just going to select a altitude based on um, the weight of the aircraft. Passengers, well, you can set auto, but you might want to put in a number and cargo. This is where really you need to be, you kind of need to have the sim open so I'm not really going to look at this today. Um, there is ways of working out how much cargo you put on board or you know, zero fuel weight as well. For today's flight, I'm just going to set it to auto. 
within if you're using for example PMDG 737 or 777 you can generate a zero fuel weight and uh, it will be a two digit number decimal and one digit so for example 51.7 tons you could set that there and then the flight plan will be calculated around that or you can set it to auto if you don't know it's still going to give you the correct routing but the fuel burn um, figures might not be exactly right so just kind of keep that in mind um, right it's already looked at a route and it's found the standard instrument departure and then it's found the um, arrival into Paphos as well there's some other routes here so you can switch it up so we can do a, a Dover 8 mic departure and the Dipos 2 Alpha arrival so let's go with that hit analyze route okay so it looks like it doesn't like that route so let's try the other one okay so this route is valid and it's given a distance there and you can see down here it's plotted the route on a chart which is really cool we'll have a look at that in just a moment some other options then you have the option to change the layout now different operators have different layouts so there's this is standard which is the Lido one but there's some identifiers here for other airlines so you can have an EasyJet flight plan you could have a uh, British Airways flight plan you could have a Ryanair flight plan or KLM and so on and so forth today I'm just going to use Lido uh, units I fly in the UK or Europe we use kilos however you can change that to pounds uh, there's other things you can add in here which I'm not really going to look at these are things that you can check out in the user guide and now some things that you might want to put here just to kind of uh, make things realistic we don't need ETOPS um, that's if we were flying over water with two engines uh, well over oceans if you like over great distance we want a detailed nav log step climbs um, we'll leave that tick but I'll go through that another day runway analysis why not no terms definitely and flight information region no terms yeah let's do that okay so we've got everything set there I've gone through that pretty quickly but um, you know it's just an overview really so once you're happy with all those uh, settings just go to generate OFP click yes and that's now going to put together all that information and it's going to um, yeah it's going to build a route and build a nav log with all of our waypoints and airways and some information about those okay so here we are then with the final plan so you can see it's pulled that information through so our flight number our origin and destination the alternate it's calculated a cruise altitude of 33,000 feet and um, 4 hours 14 minutes flight time how much fuel we need now, of course bear in mind this is an estimate so you might need to take some more or you might need less so uh, probably good to be over cautious there and here's our route as well and then if we go down there's that route map again so let's uh, let's zoom in here so we can go to our departure point and we can see these are the various waypoints for the um, admag 2 x-ray departure from Gatwick and then along the way these are all the points of our flight plan so this is quite nice to uh, you know have to one side printed out or on your desktop so you can follow your route as you go along and that's our arrival into Paphos so it looks a bit, bit peculiar but um, yeah it looks like flying down to this point here over the airport and then flying out and bringing it around if, um, if you haven't seen it already I did a video on how to get real world aviation charts for free so that covers how you would fly this arrival into Paphos and uh, this departure out of Gatwick or any other airports that you want to fly from some other neat things you can do on here is you could hit this button and that has now put wind direction and speed information across your flight useful to have I'm not going to go into detail about it now because this is just an overview video and I will do a proper um, video on flight planning um, I do talk about it a little bit in another video which was a, a flight from Copenhagen to Luton so I'll leave a link uh, 
in the video description so you can go and check that out. I'll just talk a little bit more about what these symbols mean and um, how it would affect uh, how it how it would affect the flight. So that's that. I think we'll leave it there for that map. Let's scroll down now and have a look at the flight plan. So this is our flight plan then, and uh, Ryanair 100. This is our route, and then you can see here it's given us some information about our fuel, so um, and our flight time as well. Contingency fuel, fuel to flight or alternates, reserve fuel, uh, the minimum takeoff fuel we require and the taxi fuel as well. You can see there we'd be uplifting probably 15 tonnes of fuel at Gatwick for our flight. Just scroll down. We've got our ATC route. So this would be what you put into your flight management system. And then if we go down a bit further, this is our flight log. So here we've got all the routing information. So this is the well, our departure point at Gatwick and then the standard instrument departure and it's also got information here about the um, flight information region you're flying into so that's really handy if you're flying on VATSIM or IVAO um, this is usually the point where you would get handed off to another controller so you can be ready to change frequency top of climb there and you can see it gives you the coordinates and the flight level um, your the wind direction, the temperature, you know, lots and lots of information. Estimated fuel on board. You know, you can print this out, and you can, um, as you go along, as they do in the real world, you'd be tracking how much fuel you've actually used, and you'd be writing it underneath. So that's really cool, and yeah, that continues all the way down the flight plan. And this is quite a long flight plan actually. Wind information, so this is helpful for the different waypoints on your route, as well as your descent. You know, if you've got a, a descent page that you need to plan in your flight management computer, you can put these details in here to tell the FMC the wind direction and uh, speed. This here we don't really need to worry about too much, but this is how the flight plan would appear to um, ATC if you're filing with them. And then we go down to the airport section as well. So you can see that there's uh, information about our departure point. Uh, there's also information about the um, flight information region we're in. So we're starting off in EGTT, which is London. And there's some details there about thunderstorms. And yeah, so here's our uh, Meta forecast and the TAF as well. And um, for our destination and our alternate as well. And then moving down, we've got NOTAMs. So, you know, this is really, really, you know, I'm, I'm only a quarter of the way down this page. There's quite a lot of information here. So you can obviously choose to use this or not, but it's really, uh, really useful information to have if you're trying to fly as realistic as possible. So if we look at, um, let's see if we can find anything interesting. It's mainly things about cranes and taxiways being closed and training that's going on. But you might find that there could be some information about an ILS not working or um, an approach not being in use or some taxiways that are closed. So you could follow that in the real world like they do in the real world. Fireworks displays, not going to be simulated in Flight Simulator. But this is the kind of information that real pilots would, uh, would have just so they're aware of it when they go flying. Scrolling down then lots and lots of no terms I don't think I really need to go into detail too much about these but you can see you can you know go as in-depth as you like with this sort of information let's go right down to the bottom okay so we end off with uh, some maps so there's our our route map details there about the jet stream and any significant weather, wind speed and direction at different flight levels and also our vertical profile and how that will be affected by, um, by the weather. And uh, that's that. So the final thing, and this is really cool, is you can download that information in a format that it can be used with specific aircraft, so in this case the Airbus from Aerosoft uh, a specific simulator, so a plan file for FSX or P3D, 
or what else have we got? Yeah, a format to use with um, Squawkbox. So if you're flying online, you might use Squawkbox to communicate with ATC. You can upload the plan into there. So for a free solution, this is really, really cool in terms of um, creating a flight plan. It's very, very in depth. Lots and lots of information there. So you could print that out or you could save it as a PDF and have it on your desktop or your iPad or whatever you want. Um, just a couple more things to mention. If you do fly online, you can pre-file this flight with uh, VATSIM by clicking there, which is neat. And uh, if you really want to, you can hit that button there and you can have the flight plan validated by um, CFMU. So CFMU, that central flow management unit, they control all of the, um, well, they're responsible for Europe and it's ATC. And you can basically have this verified by them to check if the route is valid. I guess it adds that little bit more realism. You might get a invalid route back, which means you would need to go and replan. So you might not want to do that, but um, it's just interesting to see sometimes if your if your flight planning skills stand up to the real world. So yeah, go and check that one out. And uh, that's it. So that was flight planning for free uh, for your chosen flight simulator. So it can be uh, prepared, FSX, x -Plane, you name it. Hope you found that useful. I'll be back again for another video soon about top tips for making your flight sim experience as real as possible. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for flying with the virtual airline pilot today. We ask that you remain